What's it like to be engaged in a Zen meditation retreat? During the course of an intensive retreat, we can experience many different states of mind, but most of the time, we're investigating the mind itself. What does this mean? The following talk has been edited down to just over 10 minutes. We join Simon as he discusses how to work with obstacles that may arise during meditation. Hopefully this will give you some insight into the type of work that is done during a seven-day Zen Koan retreat. We're aware of limitations in our experience of life. Limitations in our responding. Limitations in our expression of our own being. But we sort of just take those as that's how it is. And we bump up against these when we work on our koans. We find we can only go so far and then we hit one of these patterns of thinking and we find ourselves not willing to go there in investigating the koan. So we actually may well come across some of the same obstructions in working with the koan as we come across in our everyday life. But we haven't got the same strategies for avoiding them here. Then one of our strategies, one of our obstacles comes along in everyday life. We may have the strategy of turning the television on quickly to distract us. Go and phoning someone. Picking up the newspaper and reading it, whatever's in it, doesn't matter. Whatever. We find that ways of blocking out the mind. But what do we do when we hit one of these obstacles here? Oh. We find it staring us in the face. We feel... Blocked. We feel blanked. Maybe we feel afraid. We feel unsettled. We feel we don't know what, what to do, where to go with this. And then we can get a bit stuck at that point, sort of almost give up. Oh, it's not working for me, this car. I should have chosen that other one. No, it's working very well. It's got you to exactly where you need to be. It's got you to face to face with one of your habits of thinking, one of your fixed views. And this is very valuable. This means that uh, maybe I can't come round and prize your fingers open, but maybe you can prize your own fingers open. First of all, you have to realise that's what you're doing. You're holding on to a viewpoint. It's not easy to see, necessarily. But, in a sense, you could say this is the purpose of the practice. To bring you face to face with these difficulties. Because they're there with you in your life. Come on retreat, you've actually got a possibility to work on them in a way which isn't always so possible in everyday life. Because, of course, it's not only the distractions that you create for yourself, it's also the distractions of life itself. They help you out to avoid quite often. But actually... On retreat, you find yourself facing this, and you think, hmm, hmm. And you may begin to get a bit intrigued. This is quite curious that I feel a bit stuck at this point. I don't really quite know why I'm stuck. And it's a bit frustrating being stuck, but it's also maybe a bit curious. Maybe there's a possibility of opening something up here. So if you have the motivation and the courage, this is actually a very good place to be. So when you find yourself confronting something like this, when you find yourself feeling stuck, feeling frightened, feeling blank, feeling confused, what to do? Remember that word, investigate. Taste the moment. This sense of Obstruction? Does it have a flavour? Is it sort of uh, a bit bitter? Is it a bit, um, a bit dull, heavy? Is it rather frightened? And experience that feeling. And then realise there's probably a mixture of things. It's not just one word. One word doesn't quite do it. 
It's dull heaviness, for example. What is it? Is it grief? Is it sort of a blocking? Some emotion you're not permitting yourself, like anger? Is it a sort of shield? And if there's fear, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of uh, being hurt? Are you afraid of being overlooked, ignored? Are you afraid of not being loved? So many possible fears. So if you find yourself afraid, next question is, what am I afraid of? Sometimes we're afraid of fear. We sort of get into a cycle, we don't like feeling afraid. So we get afraid of feeling afraid. We have to sort of trace it another layer back to see what the original impetus was that set that in, in motion. So there's quite a lot of subtlety and sensitivity required here and a willingness to sit with whatever comes. Remember, let it be. Let it be is not a passive phrase. It means be with it experience it and experience the movement of it maybe a wave of fear but then it moves and maybe there's a link in the mind to what the fear is about maybe a dull feeling but then there's some intuition what the dullness is about if you just withdraw the moment you get a sense of dullness or a hint of fear you're not investigating. But if you feel the fear but just stay there with it, then you're investigating. If you feel the dullness, the blankness, the obstruction, and stay there with it, then you've got the possibility of getting a hint of what's supporting it. And it's usually a story of the mind. A story that if I don't behave in a certain way, I'll get hurt and I'm scared of getting hurt, so I'll, I'll not behave that way. A story that this happened to me once and it was very unpleasant and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I don't get anywhere near any situation which bears any resemblance to that situation. You're limiting yourself. And you're limiting yourself unnecessarily. You've sort of uh, generalised too far from one particular, or maybe several, but particular experiences, you've worked out a strategy of getting through life without being hurt in that particular way. And you've applied it indiscriminately ever since. And it's been relatively successful. You've not been hurt in that particular situation since, hopefully. But it's been unsuccessful because it's very limiting. You don't allow yourself certain choices. You find yourself not allowing contacts with certain types of people. It's very limiting. But mostly you skirt around that because you've sort of got in your, in your head the idea that, well, that's just how it is, I have to do that. Well, maybe at the time, all that time ago, when this pattern started, you did have to do that. It was, seemed a suitable way of coping. But times moved on, people have changed, places have changed, circumstances have changed, and uh, it's time to reevaluate. And to know what it is that needs to be reevaluated, you need to do this investigation. You need to get in touch with what's underlying the fear. You need to get in touch with what's underlying the heaviness, whatever it might be in your particular case. Because it's not really a matter of evaluating the fear or the heaviness. It's a matter of evaluating what's driving it. How realistic is that fear? Is the, the cause for that fear the trigger? Or how much has it got inflated in my mind? Unexamined over the years. And there comes a sort of tipping point when sitting with it, investigating it, allowing yourself to feel it, you just feel the size of the distortion of your life. And then you realise that the distortion 
of your life is doing more harm than the thing you're afraid of. And you suddenly flip into thinking, I can take that risk. It's an old risk. It's faded. And you suddenly can be free of that long-standing tendency to see the world a certain way, to react a certain way, to hold a certain view or opinion. Suddenly it can just drop away. It's seen as counterproductive. You've carried an assumption that it has to be that way and suddenly you see it as counterproductive and you just drop it. So something you've been grasping onto, this word grasping, you've been holding onto a view and you've sort of had it pointed out to you perhaps over the years but you've just shook it off, it's, it's okay, that's how I do things. But now sitting with it face to face in your practice without distraction you see it more clearly. Maybe clearly you've never seen it before and suddenly the fingers just release. It's gone. I don't want to hold this anymore. I've held it a long time but I don't need to hold it anymore. I thought I needed to hold it forever to be safe. But I don't. It was a mistake. And there might be some tears without realising lost opportunities. But they may turn to tears of happiness at future opportunity, no longer obstructed. This is the koan investigating you, isn't it? You thought you were investigating a koan. But the koan, your difficulties with the koan, highlight difficulties with yourself. And sitting in the protected space of a retreat, you find yourself investigating difficulties. Don't shy away from this work. You have a very precious opportunity in this sort of environment to press much further than is possible in the distracted, busy lives that we lead the rest of the time. Well, I hope you found that useful. For more information on Zen meditation retreats, please visit our website, www.westernchanfellowship.org.